Hey everyone, we have an end of show Computex news recap for you just before we go over to Japan. So we'll have some content there as well, just kind of walking around and touring things. And quick note, if you missed stuff during the show, we uploaded a ton of videos. YouTube probably did not send them all to your sub box. So make sure you just go straight to the channel and check out what we uploaded for the last week because there's a lot of it. So for this week's news recap. We're talking about the Intel 28 core CPU again. We're also talking about the 8086K, the Athlon 200GE series, and a couple of other items from Computex. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's View 37 case. The View 37 focuses on highlighting custom PC builds with its full panoramic window and tinted front acrylic. In our thermal testing, the View 37 performed reasonably well when considering its looks-focused build, which is partly thanks to the airflow design and the removal of a bottom power supply shroud. For a balance of looks and performance, check the link in the description below for the View 37. For the Intel 28 core CPU, a couple things to note. First of all, we had a call with Intel after publishing our video, and we were told the same thing as what Tom's hardware published, just difference was we waited to film a, a news recap to include it. So as Tom's was told, we were also told that Intel functionally made a mistake during the demo, basically was the gist of it, and that they forgot to note that the 28 core CPU was overclocked when it was set to five gigahertz. So you had a lot of news media, especially non-technical media or less technical media, running stories that the 28 core would be a stock five gigahertz CPU. Not quite the case. Another thing here, so we were talking about how it's almost certainly Skylake X architecture on the 28 core. And as far as we know from all of our sources, that's accurate. It's basically an 8176 Xeon CPU. We've also, been told and have had uh, have known this for a little while but it's probably going to become cascade lake it's just it wasn't at time of demo so it was shown way ahead of when the cpu should have been shown because it just simply wasn't ready and basically ended up being a disingenuous demo as a result of it so the product should be good enough on its own once it's ready to turn heads and to be impressive this is the thing we talked about with ryzen where you really don't have to make things up to make the product look good if it's already good. It doesn't have to be good at everything, and if it's not ready now to talk about, then just don't talk about it now. So anyway, 28 cores should eventually be Cascade Lake, uh, probably, and it was definitely overclocked during the demo, and Intel just forgot to say it or something along those lines. The 80, and that's, by the way, uh, also straight from the Tom's Hardware article, which is already public. So the 8086K is the other Intel CPU. This one is a binned 8700K. We talked about it a little bit, and it's a bit odd, so it's $425. It's supposed to be a bit uh, a limited run, but from what we understand, it's not going to be that limited. So the 8086K, kind of hard to justify. It's a bin 8700K that does 5 gigahertz, basically. And uh, other than that, it's commemorating old, old processors from Intel. So unless you're sentimental about, the, uh, <laughs> about that particular era of processors, not a lot of reason to spend the money on it. Another news item on CPUs, Anantech reported that the AMD Athlon 200GE and 200GE Pro CPUs should be competing with the Pentium Gold market. So this will be the new Athlon series. Typically, AMD has Athlon X4s, for example. They are actually pretty popular CPUs. And these ones are supposed to be 3.2 gigahertz stock, 35 watt CPUs, and they are targeted again at Pentium Gold, built on Ryzen architecture. Presently unclear if there will be an IGP, but possibly not if it's following the typical Athlon line. That's socket AM4 and it's two cores and four threads from what the uh, listings showed on AMD's website. Asus had CLCs at the show. So Asus at Computex, we talked about their cases already in our uh, needs improvement at Computex video, but the CLCs were sort of interesting. These are built on Asetech pumps. Our understanding is that they should be Gen 6 pumps, which is what the H150i uses, and the uh, Asetech CLCs have LCDs built into them, basically. That's the, the fanciest part of it. That's the only thing they're really changing with Asetech's pump design. The, uh, one of them has a VRM fan. It just blows straight down, so, or we're not actually clear if it blows down or if it pulls air up, but either way, very little airflow over the VRMs might help a bit, but it's more of a gimmick than anything. Uh, if you have a case fan on the top of the case, that'll do a lot more for you than that 
CLC fan will. Plus, it's going to be noisy because it's small, and small fans whine, and they also die really, really fast. Uh, so more of a gimmick than anything, really. But that's Asus's CLC lineup. That's going to be the Ryujin, which is a $120 uh, for 240 millimeter, or there's a 360 millimeter variant as well. It's got Noctua NFF12 fans, so the fans will be doing all the heavy lifting. 60 millimeter VRM fan, and then there's also 1.77 inch OLED panel on it that can play back GIFs, system stats, images, things like that. And Gen 6 has liquid temperature sensing capabilities if you weren't familiar with that. Quarter 3 2018 launch for that. The other ROG CLC is the ROG Ryu, which has a 240 and a 120 variant. Asetek Gen 6 pump, Asus fans with wind blades as on the Thor PSU. Quarter 3 launch, $100 for 240 millimeter. And uh, also at Asus's booth, there was Asus Tor, who have just pushed out a new 4-bay NAS with 10 gigabit ethernet. It's supposed to be pretty affordable. I think it's these 2-bay and 4-bay 10 gigabit NASes are supposed to be in the low hundreds of dollars range, so pretty competitive with Synology. Finally, Rio Toro had their new case called the Morpheus, which is not a finished product and they want audience feedback on it. We'll be talking about it in one of our other videos coming up soon. ATX, EATX, Micro ATX are all supported at max height. It can actually fit all three, of course, but at the shortest height, it can fit ATX and Micro ATX. The case is basically resizable. That's the whole gimmick with this one. The motherboard can be installed inverted and an upright option was not really considered until just recently, so that might change. They are presently unsure on the fan count, but it sounds like at least one RGB LED fan will be included and probably, possibly, an 80 millimeter fan, although we typically don't really like those because they are loud and, again, they die pretty fast. The case is all custom tooling. It's using a 200 millimeter front fan option as well, or will potentially include one. All steel construction, lots of ventilation, and has a tempered glass side panel that may be an option in the future. Price is TBD, launch is expected possibly quarter four, and Rio Toro, if you don't know, is comprised of a couple of former Corsair folks, so they do have some experience in this. The Morpheus uses an interlocking front, back, and set of side panels to resize ATX to EATX compatibility. The side lock mechanism for the panels has not been finalized and it was screwed in right now so we were unable to show it unfortunately but basically they're supposed to slide up or down to achieve the desired height for the case and the case is basically perforated metal sheets but the build quality was surprisingly good for a company that's new to the market so that's it for this news roundup as always links in the description below for more information or actually just go to the YouTube channel because you probably missed a lot of uploads because we had a lot of them and YouTube doesn't send everything out to sub boxes anymore. So check the channel, subscribe if you're not, and go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.